Okay, folks, hello. Welcome to uh, this talks on June 9th, July 9th, July 9th of this year. Uh, I am Chris Cords and I am fully awake. And uh, this is going to be our first kind of off season episode, you could say. Uh, hello, I'm solving have problems. Any card spoilers to talk about, obviously, because they're all done with. So we're just going to discuss what's been going on in the game, any things that have come up, any topics that have caught our attention over the course of the year, uh, over the course of the past couple of weeks. Yeah. So I guess just to get things started, I mean, uh, the set's been with us for half a month or so, or a month now. Uh, I know you have a play group that you play with, right, Solly? Yeah. So, how are things over there? Yeah, yeah. Um, thorax is gross. Sorry, Twilight more. is also gross. Or um, answers. Ah, I see. So Twilight to put in more as as, as control deck now. More answers. It's control. Okay. Um. Yeah, just just control. Um, because it's like, ah, oh, look, all these numbers have happened, and you have, oh, enough action tokens to make you win. Cool, I lose. And then, yeah, that's it. <laughs> like, right. it's brutal. Um, and the only reason that I usually beat it with Thorax is because Yellow has so much inbuilt hate for it. Uh, because you can just battle snakes. The Yellow song has... You know, basically let you solve through a troublemaker this turn right. and stuff like that. So, 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 you're so the only uh, reason that my Thorax uh, deck can beat it is just because it just goes, "Oh, hey, it's it's not there anyway." Uh... <laughs> uh, it's it's this really basic sort of budget build for me to get used to how he works and sort of figure out yeah. how to do ratios. Where all I've done is put in three copies of each of the okay. ones that means critters don't go to your home limit. Added pink, so, yeah. and then put in every event that makes critters and some other sensible cards. And even that, that is just ridiculous. <laughs> because Thorax gets huge, then you play the Changelings or Flutter Holly as your second copy of Thorax, and you just kind of win. <laughs> because when they're like, oh, cool, I'll use all this removal, you're like, cool, what hundred critter tokens are you going to get rid of? Because if... Because as I run literally six copies of Critters Don't Go to Home Limit cards, it's not like taking them out constantly is going to work, so I'll just have another in hand because I'm also running pink, thus I've got a bit of card draw going on and stuff. So, yeah. It's kind of nuts, and I haven't even sort of got sort of got to the point where I'm sort of grinding it down yeah. to be the best it can be. It's just it's just yeah, its initial right, build, and it's great. Today. It's ridiculous. Oh. I, 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 I'm still not entirely sure oh, what his gosh. sort of final form is yeah. be, so to speak. Uh, it... Still trying to figure out if the farming build works or not. But. Yeah, that's just. I feel like just because you kind of need to yeah. splash a second color, it just kind of won't. As all the other farming decks will be more consistent than you because they'll just yes. do their deck. And then be like, cool. Yeah, Whereas you'll be there, like, well, I got purple uh, out, and then they'll flip a villain, or you'll lose your purple, like, and you'll be like, well, hello, oh, dear. Six and it just kind of gets awkward. <laughs> and then villains and events pretty much for the rest. And yeah, there's, there's definitely no space in there for a second color. Um, but, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. He seems like a really nice farming. Yeah. He has just to play cards, yeah, that means he gets big. And those cards don't have high printed power, which is literally the I worst guess, thing yeah. ever. <laughs> For fun. But it's still good to hear that. <laughs> which, I guess, I guess is a good part of his design if it was uh, on purpose. You know. Style. I, you know, it's, it's like... Yeah. And if you're wondering, like, any tw any deck that's not Twilight and has troublemakers, um, I imagine that's they just not, lose. I imagine that's you put Forex there, and he has seventeen done, power, power, and they go, "Cool, pretty... I lose the face off," and you go, "Thanks." All right. 
<laughs> yeah, pretty easy. Um, it all you need to do is play the card Industrial Revolution. Hmm. Uh, if you don't double face off the first turn you play it, then Thorax gets basically to about seventeen. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty ridiculous. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, so Thorax is like yeah, officially one of the best, yeah. like if not the best yellow I, main, just like yeah, the only one printed full stop. Um, just stupid. Well, of course, yeah. But then you shot the shot. I mean, he was like experiment with it, but I pulled an ultra rare main, so of course I'm going to experiment with that first. <laughs> it's just how it works. Yeah, as for. Me Yeah. So other than that, yeah. Um, I've been trying to continue with my weird mono orange spike. Um, Limestone has been doing a lot of work in it. Oh my gosh, has, be, has she been doing a lot of work? I'm yet to get the AJs for it, the ultra rares, um, but I feel like those are also going to be completely ridiculous. And mm -hmm. um, the common double diamond is something I put in because I use a lot of cards like Bailout, where discarding is an extra cost. And it's actually been kind of neat. I never want to play him as a friend, so I think he's going to go down to like a two or maybe even one of. Yeah, the main I, on four I, I power a, when I don't have inbuilt is power boost. It's actually been really nice. About admittedly. Oh. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah, no, yeah. this is just this mono orange that I keep alive because it was the first ultra rare main I ever pulled was Spike. You know, the one from Crystal Games. And so, after I built a deck around him and won the first tourney I took him to, because yeah. I just built this weird yellow, no, not yellow, orange something else aggro deck, because obviously if you play four cards, he flips. Um, so it's like orange X aggro, where you just played yeah. loads of small things and had bombs, like just really big things. And then you just kept the really big things alive because Spike flips to keep them from being dismissed. Yeah, they weren't. After winning my first tourney, because like, they were just like, oh, I use my... Because it, because removal was like absolutely terrible back when Crystal Games first came out. Unless you literally like, oh, get a playset of Yoink and get a playset of this uh, other rare. It was just like, oh my gosh, I can't deal with your giant thing. It's just there. And I'm like, yep, yeah, it is. <laughs> so it sort of evolved into this weird mono orange. Con I, I'll call it mid range, is the best way to give it. Because it can kind of do everything. Against control, it can be kind of fast. Against aggro, it can be kind of controlling. And against mid range, it can just like go big and try and beat it. Uh, but its main, its main finisher, in ever, yeah. and I love it, is the Granny Smith from High Magic that has persistent, and you can banish a card from your discard pile uh, so yeah. that it's not frightened. Uh, so obviously, whenever it would leave play, you can go to frighten it, and then rather than frighten it, you just banish a card right. from your discard. You stick highly motivated on her, and she goes to five power. The next turn, she's six, seven. Eight, and then you stick another highly motivated on it, and yeah. then she's twelve, and then you win because you have the big, you have a thorax. <laughs> um, and it's just kind of fun. Um, like it doesn't always win. Right. I wouldn't say it's yeah. the most consistent deck, and I wouldn't say yeah. it's particularly great. But I, I always enjoy playing it. A Smith off. It is so satisfying. Oh my gosh! You can also run. I also run um like Castle of Friendship. Just because it's like, oh, but they'll just do this and dismiss it. And I'm like, well, no, Spike protects resources too. So I've got like a few cards that don't usually get played because you're like, oh, but if they just dismiss it straight away, it's bad. But in this deck, it's kind of So Castle of Friendship actually is like, yeah, is absolute boss in it. it yeah. <laughs> and my friends know the absolute terror of seeing two Castle of Friendship on the field at once and just being like, no, <laughs> stop. <laughs> Uh, especially when I've delayed the like, it's when you delay him with a TM early, and you just get out castles, and they're just like, mm -hmm. yeah. stop. And then I'm sat there with like eight action tokens, and they're passing to me, and I'm just like, thanks. Gonna go to twelve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's very fun. Um, game for sure. It kind of yeah, gets actually, beat by tier one on stuff. The subject of, uh, it's never uh, been designed to be tier one. <laughs> I, uh, I, I had a friend after our. Uh, last stream, uh, tell me that I was way wrong about Orchard Blossom. Um, 
based on that particular idea. The uh, the the sequence he proposed basically was to run. Uh, let me see here. Any orange main, and then you play Apple Bloom Remarkable, turn one. You uh, use her to get out a one power white friend and discard taking charge to that. And then you should be able to play Orchard Blossom turn two and get taking charge onto the field turn two. Which uh, would, be, would be pretty good. Uh, if you could actually make that work. Cute. Yeah, you do need a lot of those cards to be in. I mean, getting that to happen hand. is like, um, let's call it <sighs> magical Christmas land. Yeah. Let's use that term, um, magical Christmas land. Uh, but yeah, like that's a point that obviously it's, it's a card that can be insanely explosive because it's only, it, it's very low requirement so if you yeah. set, if you set it up early, you can just play it. So uh, I, I, I think very good. <laughs> Admittedly, well, the, the the correct response to being uh, like yeah. that is to uh, build the deck and see if it's any good. Uh, so we'll see. I... Uh, oh, I really still just need to get a um, yeah. a one of the super rare eventers. I keep forgetting it. The event that does it. Please. I still need to get one more of them, and then I'll start uh, yep. bro. I want to build the deck without three. But I'd say the best orange main for it is probably the Cantalot Knight's Applejack. Mm -hmm. yep. Because you're just like, cool. Bing cards, bing cards, bing cards, bing cards, bing cards, bing cards. Cool. Reanimate everything. I, everything that's good. <laughs> um. So that's about as far as I've got because I just don't have the card yet. Um, you obviously run the Sweetie Bell, and you use it on yourself because you're like, oh, I want that in hand because it's a redeeming qualities, and I want to, I want to use redeeming qualities on that, so I'll bin it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's and it's kind of just in my head for now as I'm focusing on Thorax. But once I get the redeeming qualities and I've done enough with Thorax, there'll probably just be a video on it on YouTube, and. Doing some crazy things that I will be laughing maniacally about. Oh, they! I I want them oh. to just print like a seven for seven that's colorless and it has that'd no abilities. Card to throw it's just game. the fact that it's a seven yeah, for seven. You're right. And I would just be like, yes, bring that back. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, like what? What would use it except for like orange purple because it makes a million action tokens, but you're there. Yeah. Um, because a seven for seven is just too difficult to play, even if it's got no requirement. Like it's a thing they could print if they really wanted um, to push Reanimator to be a deck because it's just like cool. Or if they wanted to push people actually running the new style like Glimmer Ultra Rare, so yeah. one of the redeem cards yeah. is playable because. I don't mind if you pay for, eight for action matter, tokens in, for her in, if you, what you what get to dump something that costs seven. Have, <laughs> the, uh, the like, you can't be too mad, honestly. No. So, yeah, like, he is often a pretty oh, is he? Uh, I don't have any copies, so I'm probably not going to uh, test with him because yeah. I don't I, 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 I'm to playing it. in a specialized <laughs> environment in uh, you know, the, uh, the Silver Spanner tournament. Uh, so, I'm not. Not pure harmony, really, but um, in my first, the first time I ever played him was uh, getting rid of two of the eccentric three Zakoras, uh, which really, really helped me out that turn a lot, right? Yeah. Um, Seems nasty. Pretty much, yeah. To be fair, like with a card like him, I think it's worth playing him. If you so, get yeah, to dismiss he, he, more than one he, he thing. He's a card where my opinion has kind of improved a little bit uh, with play. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have something else. Fair enough. Oh, right. Yeah, that thing. Uh, so. If... So, the new set was announced, sort of. Well, 
I um yeah. I, I'm, um, I'm not so sure that, say what, would that you call it a leak that. or it's just certainly accident or what? Early um, beginning um, uh, mention of what's already coming. Although at, at the same, go ahead. Yeah. Uh yeah. Or um also the fact that we've actually like got a we do have a date for it, right? Give me one quick second. It came with a date. It's just like, oh, thank gosh. Because I was like, it's in October. I mean, it, it, it is October. It's, it's like second week of October sometime, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> but, which is what kind of makes me think that maybe it was intentional. Because it's, it's, it, it's clearly meant to line up with yeah. the movie. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if, if, if it's part of the advertising push for that, then I guess, okay, sure. Um, the movie. Yeah, it's like, hey, look, there's more things to do with the movie, and obviously it's going to release. It's going to release right next to the movie, so that accidental packs bought by kids, especially with the whole simplified rules uh, announcement yeah. part with it. Um, so yeah, I feel like that might have been there was no for date the younger audience. Perhaps uh, yes, the, but yeah, there was there uh, was no specific date besides October. But one assumes games are a little too complex for its own good. Clearly, after the movie, so. uh, yeah. And uh, for anybody who you know soldiered through uh, marks in time, it might seem kind of quick to be getting on with a new set already, but it, it, it's actually like you know June to. October, it's four months. That's that's reasonably normal for other card games, I think. Or, you know, for Magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Magic, it's three months, and then there's some yeah, mental sets going on in between each three months, pretty much. And then, it, and another thing we're pointing out. But then again, it's, it's so a, huge a that they can just do that. Not, uh, not just like a Celestial Solstice supplement, it's going to be 140 cards. Oh. A good sign of sorts, if, if, if this kind of frequency is yes. done. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. Although I hope I don't mind them taking a break if they want to design another two hundred to three hundred card set, though. Okay. I want. To, I, I would like kind of start of a new, the idea of a new block constructed again, um, right. as I've just had. I've had so long with block two, um, that it's just kind of like, ugh, kind of sad. I'm so used to rotation with magic, yeah. where it where it changes pretty much every year. Uh, the, it's just like, can I have a new block? It's been a while with this one. <laughs> Patient. Considering that the main format is is Harmony, where everything's yeah. legal, I'm just like, oh, I want Still I want to change something that I hope they change. Cards that get played. Be cool to see. We'll see. But yeah, that means that like, honestly, we might be getting the first the first few spoilers, maybe even a Gen Con this year. <laughs> Uh, that might be a little bit early, but... Oh, right. That's right. Mm, it'll be tough, because movie spoilers. Cards have things from the movie on them yeah. that we're not allowed to see until the movie is a thing. We're not going to get anything <laughs> until, like, the movie's happened. Um... I guess there could be cards that have trailer footage on them that could very easily yeah, be I guess so. spoiled, but it's just like they probably wouldn't want to risk anything because the flavor text might give stuff away and blah blah blah. It's a complicated. It's kind of a complicated mess with this card game sometimes, where it's just like can't actually release a set until this season's over. Oh hey, this season got delayed. Good. <laughs> well, things like that. So yeah. Wow. I've no idea how spoiler uh, season is going to be with that set if it is really, really like close to <laughs> really close to the it's, movie. Yeah. It's, it's I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a date that's I got a set. Know. Not, I'm pretty sure it's also in October though, which is like um, 
Nice. Mm. Eight. Uh, give me a second. It is the sixth. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, at, 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 at least we've got most of the month left. Then. Uh, yeah. And, and, and Blake could try something like that, or they could just. Yeah. You know, so if, it, if it's released really late October, we could have like two use the movie three weeks, weeks and stuff. Benefit, but. Yeah, who knows? Um, I'd love, I'd love there to be like with Yu-Gi-Oh, where when you go to Yu-Gi-Oh movie, you get a promo yeah. card. I wouldn't be against that, although I don't know if there'd be any British screenings that would actually have them. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but I wouldn't be against a whole sort of if you get this card, ooh, because um, that'd be cool. Probably have it be the main antag in the trailer. Well, yeah, for, for the amount of <laughs> for the amount of TCG cards that have been kind of forced on us over the years, <laughs> I'd be fine with that. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, I've never minded too much when yeah. I just throw in the the trading cards and the. And the dog tags into pre-release stuff. I'm just like, okay, right. whatever. I've I've memorized all the game actions, so I take the trading cards that I think look cool and stick them in front of my scorecard. Yeah, oh, certainly. That's what I do, so it looks nice. Because um, my issue with tracking with dice is that I knock dice all the time. Oh, totally. Uh, with the scorecards, the... knocking knocking a scorecard is difficult. Um, I've done it very rarely yeah. in comparison to with dice. No, I continue to use scorecards and it's to this also, day because it's the easiest way to track and score it's also very for me. To be and because I know all the game so actions, I put pretty so shiny so cards so in front of them. And they look cool. Whatever. I know. I. Uh... You see, the easiest way to alleviate that issue is to get a magic life counter dice. I uh, keep... Uh... As it starts at 20, yeah. it goes down, so you can I start at 20 and then flip it straight to 1 when you get your first point and it just counts up. Likely so. Yeah, I, uh, so I, I keep running into people who have those and... And you can probably get them for like a, I really a dollar. <laughs> Or just keep if on you, using if you do a bulk card, order uh, off anything, just just check the site, see if they have any random life yeah. uh, magic life counter dice. <laughs> or just keep... Uh, don't uh, knock so your dice. Yeah. Um, um, so, where we are right now, as I guess I was saying, we, we, uh, uh, TrotCon is just next week. Uh, um, but I, I yeah, spent some time looking at their schedule. I didn't see anything like hard related there. Uh, so it's basically... Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and Probably. And GalaCon is soon, which is the Euro big European con in Germany. I'm sure there must be something going on for the card game there. Last time, last time it was there, the people who were hosting the card game stuff um, were actually angry at Enterplay because <laughs> they lost their license to do. So they just gave out free promo night gliders, and I was like, yeah, "Why well, wasn't I in Germany?" That'd be nice. I want my, I want my free like eighty dollar cards, please. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap! Uh, that was that was quite a story to hear when when Galvacon happened last year. In theory, sorry, there yeah. should be. Yeah. If all else fails. If someone wants to play a card uh, so yeah, game. Yeah, then it... <laughs> uh, uh, So, yeah. Sure, of course. If there, if there is a tourney, I'll try and I'll try and oh, of course, yeah. see if we can pull the results from somewhere and pull all the deck lists from somewhere. Because that's an easy thing to talk about. Oh, definitely. Um, how, how weird the uh, European... Uh, to America. But, uh, besides that, I guess it's really... Well, I know... 
personally, my eyes are all on Brony Khan and uh, Yeah. Um, my my internet eyes are on Brony so, My 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 real life eyes are waiting for Galaxy. So like I'm um, thinking like, yes. <laughs> I've uh, I've uh, spent so much time um, with the person this past month. So yeah, uh, should be good. Uh, I don't want to say fooling around, but basically building a deck to see if this card's any good, building a deck to see if this card's any good. But uh, I uh, I haven't spent much time actually uh, thinking about, so to speak, real decks that I would actually want to run in a tournament. Um, yeah. 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 When a new set comes out, you're too busy experimenting with everything to be like, wait, what do I actually want to run if there's a big tourney? <laughs> and right now, I have no idea, honestly. I know that for if it's specifically block two, I've updated my pink white and it got so much worse um, because reanimating Method Mares or um, Party Philly so that Sorry, you that. a friend. Yeah, it, it's 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 basically yeah. in the pink white you use party of one, but you also use method mares and this other one that's a cutie marking friend. That when you cutie mark it, you dismiss. Yeah. In combination with the new uncommon in pink white, that when it enters or when it chaoses, yeah, you get a thing with cost two or less back. See, with method mares you pay two, and it's basically like you dismissed it because you take it. And then with the other one, you can pay two and dismiss something. And just when you play, he's basically a uh, a Mega Mare that you get to do over a period of time, rather than having to pay five. Uh, it's just yeah, brutal. Taps, I, I that's <laughs> it is. Though, it sure. is so nasty. Yeah. 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 That uh, the value on that card is pretty ridiculous. Yes. When you think about it. I always forget names because. There's... Yeah. Also, my friend who's running a Harmony Pink White deck has been using him to bring back the the uh, bring back Sonatas um, and uh, the uh, what are they called yeah. the one the one for one with two requirement that when it enters you just take a friend until end of turn and then mix that with stuff like Belly Flop. Yes, that's mm -hmm. it. I was like, it's two ponies. I just can't remember which two it is. In com like with combination with those cards, yeah. it's. Yeah, Pink's kind of settled into it. Because it's like, oh, cool, and then I will retire this and bash that, and it's like, yep, that yep, kind of style. yep. Mm. Pretty impressive, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Because Pink and White have so many good cheap well, he cares friends about, well, uh, with really nice abilities. He cares about Pink and Power. And right. Tender Taps just brings any of them back once you've used them, which is gross. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was cost. I don't know. Either way, the two cards I use, it wouldn't change if it was printed power or cost. <laughs> Basically, um, yeah. Yeah, like, it's just bring back something that was good for its cost for free. You're right, it's cost. And use it again, and it's just like, all right, this is fair. And then he has Eccentric 2, just to rub it in. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah. oh, yeah. he's so, so nasty. For, for my part, I'm just, well, thinking about, uh, I'm I'm encouraged when you say Twilight's good. Uh, probably. Yes, it is real nasty. Just, just basically, um, the easiest advice I can give is run to cover to cover, um, run truffle as entry, because the more action tokens that you have, the better you can control your opponent with your with your troublemakers. Uh, the current iteration that's being used uh, at our local playgroup is blue, because they've realized that when you use blue, it's easier for you to confront initially and then blue has a lot of cheat into play effects, like the zeroed out Twilight and Quibble. So you can confront, and then you can dump 
any troublemaker you want. Just like that. And that is actually really nasty. And it's been quite annoying. Yeah. Um, but I feel like orange is also yeah, obviously see. a good combination because of the old purple orange. Yeah, I'll, I'll admit that. Um, blue, easy sort of yeah, set up blue, all your flips and type I, control I, I stuff alongside really factory orange. jack, etc. You know, some stuff like that. Right. But it's really annoying because you've gained stuff like Shapati attack as well. When it's like, oh man, I could frighten that frighten that friend with more than four power, mm -hmm. and it's better than me just paying two action tokens. Hey, good. As well as it just being frightened. Ha. <laughs> Um, the new Luna, the super rare one. Oh my gosh, I hate it. Because <laughs> um, the fact is, they run they run the Chrissy from the new set. They want to run the Starlight from Equestrian Odysseys because it would be better, but they just don't have them. So for now, they're running the Chrissy. And when they have a Luna out, and they cheat in Chrissy with Quibble, three points and three. then beat it the next turn for three points... You just cry so much. It is brutal. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Right. That sounds incredible. It can do some real nasty stuff. And once again, this is when it's just sort of first thrown together. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, this is all stuff like, take into account, like, we, we only meet up once a week to play. And we always, when we first build a new deck, we all sort of agree. Make very basic versions. Don't go too sort of competitive and high level on it. So we can all get used to how all these new cards work. Uh, just so it's like, you know, everyone gets used to how these, how their new deck's going to be, how, what it's going to be like and how you're going to play it. And then obviously we all can then from then, what we've learned, just go and make the best version of it. Uh, yeah. Early versions of all these decks yeah. is just like, what is even going on? <laughs> Thorax is crazy. Twilight is nuts. Also, Torch, the Super Rare Torch. Yeah. Well, absolute it's, it's, game it's ender in blue purple control. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, he's just nasty. Because it's just been games where I'm yeah. sat there like, oh man, I've got this. And I can do this next turn. And on their turn, they just go, I play Torch. I'm like, I think I scoop. I think I've just yeah, lost. Yeah, well, if you think about it. Because <laughs> if, if you don't have the removal, uh, at the end of your turn, frightened something? Just gets so bad. Oh. At the end of right. your turn, you frighten a friend. At the start of your turn, an opponent retires a frightened friend, I think it is. But the fact is, it's blue-purple. So, um, in combination of him and the blue-purple problem, right. where you, when you confront it, you can dismiss a frightened friend, it, his first ability isn't too important anymore. Because it's like, when you have like three frightened friends, and it's like, ah, I'll retire the one I don't care about. Yeah, you know. With the blue purple actually, problem, they just go, cool, I'll dismiss the one you're going to unfrighten. And you're like, oh, Normally, no. um, <laughs> blue and purple gone. would expect would like, have dismissal as, as It's tool, pretty nasty. But, when, when, yeah. With the problem, with good amount of frighten, that it's just it's been really nasty. Like I didn't expect it, but yeah, the guess, blue purple yeah, problem yeah, is an absolute middle. nightmare so to play we're around now. Free fright, that's at least because the frighten's so efficient. Like is the honest answer, uh, kind of. Um, and yeah, because if they don't want it, because obviously. He uh, triggers after you've confronted stuff, which is a shame for the direct synergy. But like, it's forcing your sand, it's forcing your hand so hard half of the time because if yeah. you just want to keep it, you know it's going to get frightened next turn. But if you just want to keep it on the board, you have to unfrighten it for two, or if you've got any way of doing it cheaper, I guess. But probably not. And it's just oh, it's so annoying to play against. It is. It's brutal. <laughs> Um, so yeah, yeah. Test blue purple. I, 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 I think mean, other color combinations was, may end up being you know, like strictly better, blue but blue purple is just—it looks like the, it's uh, just really annoying. Yeah, uh, colors oh got gosh. so much support this set. And, and as, as we know, it, it was—it was already pretty good in marks of time. So, you know, why wouldn't it be better now? Yeah.
Yeah. yeah. And well, I mean, it did cause a sort of it did cause a card to get banned. Despite this, <laughs> it has been this proper white bill that I've been running, kind of trying to refine for the last half a year or so now, uh, which started out as a block deck actually, uh, and then yeah, and it it would run like start uh, basically start like glimmer. That is epic Star like Glimmer. Hey. And um, and a bunch of the your troublemakers have more power stuff than purple and white hat. And then you know all of these sort of harmony replacement tools like spike number one assistance yes. instead of F stop and um, such like that. And it is it is actually not bad. Yeah. Yeah. I think Spike number one assistant's good. Like he is, he is good. It's he feels a lot more satisfying. Um, I must say, because yeah. when when you go, yeah. I'll retire Spike, and you pick up four cards at yeah. once and stick them in your hand. It's like, mmm. No, Whereas it, with F stop, you're is, only getting one at a time, it's, so it's just it's like okay, okay, okay. Sometimes, okay. You wonder, it, But like getting all the cards at once has been is just so satisfying. VPN. It's great. And 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 so okay. You tap him, you get the event back. Now it's just like looking at your opponent. Okay. I'm just going to leave him there. If, if you didn't have anything to play, I'm going to leave him there. It's it's nerve-wracking when your, your opponent might have something that they could want to do with him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, rule of thumb is always keep them at home. Mm -hmm. Just because there is still position um, position based removal in the game that people use. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It's quite funny, especially in Thorax. There's times where I'm like, yeah. I look at my hand, you know, the zipper will. I'm like, hold on, power doesn't so actually do fast. anything. So I'll play, play her at home nice just well. to keep her safe. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, okay. Oh. oh my gosh. Yeah. I also um, got my uh, third shiny copy of Critter Caregiver. Right. Thanks to Thorax. Because I never used to run more than two of her, because he's a two for two, which is kind of like annoying. But now, you always, like, you always want to have at least one of them out. Uh, if not, you want to have another one in hand because you're expecting them to get, to, obviously, to get killed straight away. Well, uh, we've got. Uh, yeah. Well, so what is like I, the calendar I, I for things happening in terms that's, of the game that's, now that's from this point? Uh, you said Galakhan's end of the month, July twenty seventh, I believe. Uh, twenty seventh to twenty ninth, I think. Um, Bronicon is. The... Yeah. 10th to the 12th of August, I want to say. Yeah, uh, no, 11th to, 11th to 13th, that's correct. Yes. Uh, and then Gen Con, okay. obviously, is the week right after that. Uh, well, 11th to 13th. Which is, which, yeah. uh, funnily enough, that's kind of the reason why I want to be sure that my decks are good. Because I'm, I'm taking one, yeah. one big vacation to BronyCon and Gen Con back to back. Which means I'm, I'm. Uh, if I go to uh, BronyCon and find out my decks suck, I'm not going to have time to rebuild them before Gen Con. <laughs> oh. So, uh, yeah. Then uh, the very next weekend after that is the Vancouver convention, Brony Can, uh, oh. the 25th to the 27th. So uh, you could pretty much spend your whole August just going to the cons. Yeah, oh I, I I know a few people. Well, I think actually some of the I think uh, Big Cheese from Contrary of Magic is doing horse cards. Him, so oh, he's a lucky man. Um, as for that, I, I haven't actually looked past August yet. I assume there's you know, uh, early early autumn is kind of the convention season. That's when things really go nuts. So I assume there's probably something in September and October. But um, after that, nothing until the next set comes out. Oh. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then again, like we've got a solid. Yeah, like this uh, month and next month of things, it, it, and it's, it, it's, it's not like the not going to be that the big, big, big giant drought that's nice. that marks the time pad, that's for sure. Yeah. See, yeah, that's... Then again, between, like, Marks in Time that, that and Defenders of the Quest Area, we've had the Rise and Fall and so stuff. This, this long a few period has, has given us a saga, types. so to speak, of you know, experimentation and, and adaptation uh, that the meta has seen, which, you know, it's debatable if that's preferable to getting a new card sooner. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the card hasn't gotten any worse. And then there's a lot of people that are still just playing Thunderlane and, uh, and beating Trump. Any worse, <laughs> I mean, you can't blame them. Yeah. So, well, I, I think that kind of is uh, the end of all of my topics I wanted to get to. Yeah. Sure. I guess I'll pose a question before we finish off then. Hmm. Does the card game getting like do cards getting better make the game well less I mean, or more interesting? We're in this conundrum that Harmony presents to us, right? Which is that like when when cards aren't leaving play. So, so to speak, and when I say when I say leaving play, I mean getting rotated out like a standard format would give us. Um, then, in order for the new cards to see play, you would think they have to be better than the old yeah. ones, right? And so, you know, uh, clearly, by that sense, cards getting better, yeah, is like the only way that the meta can change, and thus it has to be good for the game, right? Yeah, yep, I've got so I'm well I I do live right next to the rail to the A lot uh, of trains by you today. <laughs> and um we've got a uh, a uh, rodeo going on in, in 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 the city this week, so they've uh, they've they've increased the cadence of the train schedules for that. Ah But yeah, yeah okay. That, 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 that would be my argument. The that because of the way the format kind of works, we kind Fair of enough. cards just have to get better, and so I guess that's a good thing. Now, you know, if if that if if, if, if you treat that as an indictment of the format or as uh, whatever, that's you know, your prerogative. But yeah, I, I'll. I'll, I'll I've always found it a tough question myself. Because I'm like, when cards are obviously powerful, it's always oh, really course, yeah. fun to play against them. No, it's always really fun to play with them. But it can be kind of annoying to play against them at the same time. Because it's like, they just play the card and you're like, oh, now it's going to take over the game or whatever. And so for me, it's like this, it needs to be this sort of very clever balance that you need to create. Between cards being like yeah, good, see, like so that they'll get played. That you're just like, oh, and they played this card again, and mm -hmm. I'm losing because it's that card. And I'd say like cards like the Luna from this set, you know, the four for three. Whenever you went to trouble, make a face off. It's not yeah, just like, like oh, and I played this I card, think... so they're winning. No, you need to like, surround okay, it with things so that make it good. Th this game, but it's still the, the, a really, uh, really this good blooming card. Is not quite the same as most other games, like. Yeah. Because it doesn't have a real like its concept of mana is yeah. really like, different to how it works in say Hearthstone, mm -hmm. Magic, yeah. like in, and most other systems in, that have a resource of some kind. Because in all of those ones, you just kind of go up as you go. But in this one, you can store it and use it later, yeah. or you can just spam it. 
and the way it goes up is by the game getting moved forward by people scoring points, and it's this yeah, really odd system. Like, in that's just in the more completely different systems, to anything, like you, pretty you, much you, different you, to whatever you, what you everything else has say, because like, of how it works. Those big cards just win you the game when they're played are fine so long as they're at the top of the mana curve and they happen like to where at the end of the game. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, obviously, cards yeah. like that which get like, played. Well, like, there you go. It's the end of the game, and it ends the game. Call. What did um, you expect? <laughs> but you know, with this game, it's not so cut and dried, and you know, even even what counts as like a rather heavy card, like Thunderlane, will still be played on turn four or turn three if the opponent, if the if the player really wants to. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 really odd, uh, the sort of resource system in this game, and it took me a long time to get used to after playing Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh, where <laughs> you have a very strict resource system, where it's very obvious how it works, or Yu-Gi-Oh, where you don't. <laughs> and I was like, is this weird? Is this weird middle ground? Run like, uh, like initially it was just trying to get my brain around it. Where I was like, but wait, I can keep hold of this and next turn play this thing. And it's like yes. And I was like, but that seems really good to me as a Magic player. And then I realised, but also because of how the game works, like playing things that cost a lot doesn't always matter an insane amount. It's really weird. It is, and that's what makes it fun. <sighs> oh, to some of us. This game is weird. <laughs> yes, um, it's why it's why I advise it's why I advise most of people who I know that play card games to mm -hmm. because yeah. I know I've got much better at other card games just thanks to playing this one and getting a completely new perspective on how things work. Um, also, the fact that it's cheaper than stuff like Magic means that I can build a deck that's like tier one. Yep. And play at top tier level rather than magic, where I'm like, I am not <laughs> spending 300 quid to get my ass handed to me for two weeks. Yeah. I'll yeah, spend I'll, 30 I'll... quid and get in cheeky wins and annoy people. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it, it's like helped me get into sort of being more competitive. Because obviously, like, totally. just being able to run tier one. Yeah. Uh, is a thing yeah, that's actually, a that lot more difficult like, in other games where things can be a lot more expensive. Style. One of the things that it took me a really long time to understand about this game was like, um, not I, I, I guess n n not showing your hand and, and not to have to, right? Like, so the the uh, the classic example is you've got like a four power to confront problem, uh, like just at, at, at the start of the game. And, and you've got both cards in your hand that you need to do it, you know, it's usually better, and it uh, took me a long time to, uh, to uh, figure this out, to you know, not do anything on turn one, and then play both the cards on turn two, right? So that on turn one, on, yeah, yeah, there are, th 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 there are a variety of situations where... Yes. Unless... Yeah, yeah, but, well... Nowadays, you can't risk it because the um, on even grass, you can't risk it. There's been so many times where I've been playing. I've been playing my friend's blue aggro, and yeah. I'm just there with on, with on even ground on hand, and I've gone first. I just move the balloon mm -hmm. forward. Yeah, on like, I'll keep ground, two, the, uh, and I the play the on even ground. Is, uh, that yellow card, but like, ah, oh, I just lost my first turn. Back in the day, you didn't see yellow too much, but that was always the one. That just I bank two. Anyway, boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boom, you're on one. And it's like... Oh, um... <laughs> yeah. Like... But... That's what I like about it, though. Mm -hmm. The game... Yeah. Like, as we said, it's like, oh, you should usually do this, but if you see yellow or blue, you shouldn't mm -hmm. risk it. Like, I like the fact that there's always in this game, like, there's reasons why you shouldn't yep. risk plays. Pretty much, like, every play, unless you are literally comboing off. And even then, yeah. there's usually yeah. reasons to be concerned. <laughs> so, I... 
Also, I'm if you've been, if you've been made aware of the good old um, how the uh, infinite combo decks that. are doing I've with the orange, I've sort of been playing my head around with that. Yeah, I, I. It's it's been doing well. You play Sorry. both and you just kind of win. Sorry. As Which far as one I know. Are, you, are you referring to? I haven't looked up a lot. I, I don't know the exact deck list, but I'm yeah, just like, so okay, I kind of get what goes on. From what I've... Yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, Modern Big Mac, I think, is... The modern Big Mac. Guaranteed to have action Flip all your cards. Because it is and it's only, just like, I think, five cards yeah. necessary and two colors. So it's pretty... You know, com it's, vi it's very compact as far as infinites go. Um, yeah. Uh, and yeah. yeah, it's it's well, Big Mac is, yeah. is a like he gets used in farming decks, so he's. I like Maud. I want Big Mac it, to go. It, it, it would have more of an impact to get rid of him. Um, yeah, but uh, for for those unfamiliar, it's it's basically uh, Maud, Big Mac, Fashion Week, yeah. and Coco are the only important. Um, ones. and then you just need to have a Discord in your deck so that you can flicker Coco when you. Uh, flip your holes uh, back over. So it's 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 five cards. The reason why I say two colors is because you never actually have to play Discord. You just need to have them in your deck. <laughs> and yeah, kind of nutty. But as I said, I, I've I've like heard yeah. I've heard whispers that there may be another one around, uh, but I haven't actually seen it yet. And that's kind of like what I'm kind of scared about going to Gen Con because these past few yeah. th these past few years it's it tended to be oh I'm coming in with this awesome awesome deck that I think is going to be great and someone did use a combo deck and so, well they win. Yeah. It's a simple fact now that because combo's too good in this game because of obviously how it works. Whenever there's a combo, because of how the resource system works, etc., it's not like oh you can't yeah, you, totally. you can't do X until turn X. It's like cool, I will do this turn two. <laughs> well, not quite turn two, but you get what I mean. Like you kind of force it to happen as early as possible, which is a lot harder in other card games. Um, which I guess is probably the biggest downside to the system we have is that combo is just. Yeah. It's just you have to just get rid of it. Like, oh, right. There's not much else that can be done about yeah, it. You, you just have to get rid of it. You have to ban it out. You have to make cards that make it obsolete, etc. So, uh, one of the things that I find that, that, that I've found so far to be kind of unfortunate about this game is that we've got this this rule that, you know, your, uh, your, your library, your draw pile has to be minimum 45 and no maximum. And there hasn't been a deck so far that's like wanted to run more than 45 cards, right? Which, you know, it's, you know, uh, for a good reason. Yeah. But it sure would be great if someone could figure it yeah. out. Yeah. And, you know, I learned a lot about how abilities work this week. I was looking at Scrapbook Project um, and, 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 and thinking basically, like, if that was an activated ability instead, like it had a time phrase on, it and was instead like in, in, yes. in, in, in immediate when you win a problem face off, you may do this. Then, like oh. you know, that's what I would do. I, I would I would run a a deck with like an eighty card uh, draw pile, mill myself, win a problem face off, and then just win the game. And wouldn't that be amazing, right? Alas. That would be fun. Yeah, actually. I feel like like I feel like they could have made it unique and put main phase exhaust yeah, and, it. And you mean like yeah, uh, main phase exhaust. I feel like that would have been a good way to balance the card. That's the point, right? Totally. Yeah. Yeah, and do the point. I feel like that could have been okay, but. Eh. It was like that. I'd probably run it in Spike yeah, because I, it just runs so. Much, it runs all the card types, and you put all sorts of stuff in your discard pile, and it would be like, oh hey, a point <laughs> every now and again. 
Um, and the thing I still like about Scrapbook Project is the Nightmare Moon-esque effect it has, yeah, just yeah. sitting on it. See, the discard. That is actually really good. Like, Denying your opponent of cards when you have a reason to be or, dropping like, cards is like, really good. Let, let me start from, from, from the start here. So, a little while ago we did a Silver Spanner tournament. Uh, where the, the, the restriction was you had to have 12 of every card type in your deck, right? And, and yeah. yeah. And, you know, uh, people came up with some really interesting stuff, but it's, it's, okay. it's clearly a big, huge restriction, right? <laughs> and, but, but the thing is, like, su su suppose its graphic project was good enough to be a win condition, right? Yeah. Then it, it would actually encourage, basically, people to run decks like that. And you know, try to figure out some way to make that work, which would be so cool to have that kind of an influence on the metagame. Like, I'm aware of like one. To be fair, do you, do you know Magic? I love Wits. Yes. It could run more than um, base library card. Yeah, but Battle of Wits. Mm -hmm. It is hilarious. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, I would love a Battle of Wits card in this game. It would. Mm -hmm, it would yeah. make See, me like for a good ha having a card uh, yeah. like that, which especially if it was good, like actually good. If you could play it, and it would win. <laughs> some huge good thing. If your deck is weird. Yeah, something like that. It could be. If you can, like, start of your yeah. score phase, See, you score two really, points if your draw deck has over um, 150 cards in it. Wild man, which card actually all day. Cards, you know, <laughs> you check. And, you know, obviously, uh, paper card games can't do this. It to see your deck, but it, it, it would check to see if your deck had any duplicates in it. And if not, then do some amazing effect for you. Right? And, and uh, that led to some really, really cool deck building where you had to make a full unique deck and you know and, and yeah. so yeah like i i'm really a fan of those kind of cards that like do something amazing if some restriction is placed upon your deck yeah it's like oh if you do this really bad deck building choice you do something really good it's just like um Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I really like, yeah. Although it's a card design, like, it's card design you don't yeah. usually trade. It's very good most of the time because you may as well just run a consistent deck rather than an inconsistent deck that can do something crazy. But I always oh, think they're, yeah. they're an absolute, like, they're just lovely and fun. Like, they're just super fun. Um, I think my favorite Battle of Wit story I've heard. Actually, I was there. Um, so in Magic, there's this format called Pack oh. Wars, where all you do is open one booster pack. Oh, I can already see where this is going. And you can add any number of um, lands, you know, the, the sort of base, the normal resource in it, to your deck to that that booster pack, to um, <laughs> to make it so that you can build the deck. The guy. Pulls Battle of Wits as his rare awesome. out the pack and just yeah. picks up all the land in the shop and goes, Cool, I'm doing this. <laughs> he actually won one game. Good on him. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that was a fun story to tell. Uh, I've told it a few times to just go and stuff. It's, it's very funny. Um, yeah, so cards like that always create fun stories um, that about the game that people just love to tell because they're just funny. Most of the time they're funny because it's like, yeah. oh, this guy had tier one best deck, you know that deck, yeah, yeah. And he lost to the guy with 200 cards on his deck, or the guy that was running blah and blah and blah, mm -hmm. but because yeah. of this card, and they hit, you know, and no. it went off no. and they just won. It's just like, when you hear those stories, if it's just great. Anyone can say I love it. it. If, they, if uh, this game could oh. get something like that, I'd be pleased. Thanks. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Definitely. I guess Simulo Duplexus yeah. has a feel like that. Because it's just like, if if you assemble the right things, it can... It's a bit too difficult. It's not just like, build yeah, your deck in a certain uh, way. It's yeah, like, build your deck in a certain way and assemble wall, something perhaps. very difficult to assemble. When your opponent exists. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, 
or a goldfish in a bowl. The yeah, I think the so. Uh, <laughs> probably a pretty good length. Uh, so yeah, uh, for any folks, uh, watching, I think we've rambled enough. Probably going to be what our streams are going to entail uh, for the next, probably for the next month at least, um, uh, unless of course. Huh. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I feel like we'll be talking more about tourneys, though, once we get, um, once we just get a bunch of tourney data. Et cetera, yes. Uh, we'll be uh, talking about metagame and what we did and didn't expect, what I cards we thought were good actually. that haven't appeared, etc. Also, have you been keeping your eye on CCG Castle? Mm -hmm. Sorry, card prices. I, I, uh, it, it's I, very I, funny. A lot of the cards don't go that, above uh, like thirty-five dollars, but Change and Throne is at seventy-five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it made me laugh. Yeah. A little too overpriced. I'd I'd value the yeah, Royal Rare AJ course, over right. it, and that thing's about that's makes sense. Yeah, forty-five or fifty, I think. And I'd say because it's Royal Rare, it's probably worth more. Full stop. Um, even if changing throne is yeah. probably I mean, more I playable, think... it's just like, dude, it's a royal rare, and it's and it's I, definitely I a playable it's card. Kind of so like a market forces kind of thing, like there you go. This card comes out, comes but yeah, out and everyone funny. loses their minds. <laughs> Maybe, and yeah, and everyone's like, I gotta have this card, I gotta have this card, and it kind of just gets bit up a little bit. But yeah, it's talking about it. <laughs> Yeah. To be fair, yes, that's correct. To be fair, Changing Throne does stop the orange combo deck because they can't Chaos Discord anymore, I guess. Whoa, there you go. Mm -hmm, yeah. That's a reason to run it. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> probably. And, and yeah, no one. the last point I have because I just remembered it. it but, uh, yeah. I expect that price to drop a little bit uh, in the future. Yeah. Um, probably not worth 70 odd dollars. <laughs> Yeah. If unless, anyone values it at that for trades, the the card, don't trade and someone else is like willing to pay you. Two, that. three months, and hopefully yeah. its price should calm the heck down. If you're alright. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all power to them. If they want to do that, it's them, but I would advise anyone out there to just. Just wait for the price drop uh, to happen yeah. because. What with all of the? Actually, um, that's a good question. Yeah. Like resource I, I kind of assume it's that very easy to get, get hold of. The meta resource dismissal is becoming uh, much more common. Uh, I, I I'd like to know in like in like your builds of thorax. Do you run like just beavers or? Um... Oh, lemon hearts. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't even run beavers. It's not a friend. I run Lemon Hearts, the one that you retire to dismiss a resource at immediate. Yeah. Because you get to play it, and you're just like, oh, hey, look, it pumps Thorax. And oh, hey, look, it and, does and this. And oh, hey, just... look, it does that. Um, as well as it being early game and, entry. Uh, just Lemon Hearts and then enough? And shoot that, and they're just like, yeah. <laughs> and you sort of just, uh, whatever. Good for it. Right. Yep. Um, and then the two, the Yellow Song... Dismisses a resource, and you run it because it makes three critters uh, in Thorax. So you basically have six resource right. dismissal if you need it. Uh, most of the time you just don't. You play Lemon Hearts and get rid of a thing, uh, if you really need to. And that's kind of it. But yeah, like the, f the fact that the Yellow Song has much... Troublemaker removal, resource removal, yeah, make critters, is just like, okay, good. <laughs> it does everything you want it to in Yellow. Yeah. Like, I, I was like, oh, the other song is okay. Now that I've played with it, two hate functions, Anu. That is not a bad card. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. All right. It's been really uh, good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I think yeah. that probably uh, can be best for the week, unless you have anything else you want to say. Anyway. Okay. So, uh, thank you everybody for. Uh, in. Uh, until no, not that I can think of. July 23rd. And July 23rd. Uh, bye. <laughs> I have been uh, Chris, of course. 
July. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>